In the name of Jesus, amen. Rewards are given to someone out of kindness and choice of someone else, not out of obligation, because that would make it not a reward, but rather a payment or a salary or some kind of reimbursement. That is not what Jesus means by the word reward when he uses it in Matthew or when the Bible talks about rewards. Rewards are usually given by someone and in a response to an action. Not that they earned it, but that there was an action and now God gives a reward. That's what we're going to talk about in this teaching series. That God gives us certain rewards through grace alone, just like our salvation. But this teaching series also is about our responses to the rewards that God gives to us and the grace that God gives to us. We looked at the reward of a cup of water and how a simple act of kindness and service can have tremendous effect on people's lives and on the world. Simple acts done in response to God's grace can also be used by the Holy Spirit to lead people to Jesus Christ. And so today we're going to explore another reward, the reward of rest that Jesus wants to give and came to give to his disciples, his followers, you and me. So here we are, smack dab in the middle of summer. And summer is a time of vacation. Taking vacations is an important and a very popular thing to do, especially in the summertime. In fact, this message, I put this together while I was taking some time off this summer, and I'm so thankful that you have provided for me a time of vacation. I was able to spend some much needed time with my wife and my sons, and I realized that I hadn't had a true vacation in about two years for various reasons that you and I both have gone through. What I found also is that we need vacations because work wearies us. It wears us out. And while it is true that God created us to work, and I do have a Bible passage that proves that, by the way. It is Genesis chapter 2. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. It is also true that God created us to work even before the fall into sin. But because of the fall into sin, weariness now comes into our work. Even the work that we are doing that God has given to us. And so, God also gives us some time off to take time to rest, to recharge, and to relax. And vacations can be a time to do that. But there are other ways to do that as well. Not just taking a day off or a vacation time. You can take a day off that we call the Sabbath day, and then there are also what's called sabbaticals. Now, a sabbatical is actually different from uh, the time off taken for a vacation. It's a time to get away from what you are doing, even if what you are doing is what God has called you to do. It's a time to focus intently on things that will transform what you do for God in your vocation. And typically a sabbatical happens after about seven years of work. It's in the name of sabbatical. Sabbatical is based on the Hebrew word Sabbath, which is the Hebrew word that is translated in the English as seven, as rest, and as the day of the week, the seventh day of the week, the Sabbath day. People who take sabbaticals take a deep dive into a particular theme of study or with writing and reading. And they learn something in that intense study that will form them or transform them in what God has called them to do after they take the sabbatical. My friend Jeff took a sabbatical a few years ago where God showed him through an intense study on how to transform his ministry. And so when he came back from sabbatical, he was transformed into being able to help lead his flock as a pastor, as well as others, including you and I here at St. Matthew, in identifying God's dream for them and how to implement and put that dream into life. 
So the sabbatical is, is something that is a large undertaking. My other friend Ben took a sabbatical about a year or so ago, as well as his church. They worked together that he took a three-month sabbatical after 10 years at the congregation to focus on his art, his photography, and his writing. And the church also went through a time of study and how they could work together as pastor and parishioner to bring the gospel of Jesus to their community. Sabbaticals take time. They take a lot of thought and planning and resources. And not many people take sabbaticals in today's world. And, of course, sabbaticals aren't for everyone. But God is so good to us that he gives us, each one of us, a mini sabbatical every week that we call the Sabbath day. Again, I have Bible verses for you, starting back at Genesis chapter 2. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. And then in Exodus chapter 20, you know these words very well. Exodus 20 verse 8. I, I would uh, probably think that most of you, if not all of you, know the words of Exodus 20 verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. It's the third commandment. Six days you shall labor, it goes on to say, and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant, or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. And then there is Jesus who speaks about the Sabbath in Mark chapter 2 verse 27. And he said to them, that means to us, his disciples, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. In other words, Jesus is saying that the Sabbath is a reward of grace. The rest that Jesus came to bring us is a reward of grace. It is given to us out of the grace of God, and so it is connected to the grace of our salvation as well. We are saved by grace alone. Jesus worked hard to forgive us all our sins, the sins that so easily entangle and weary us. The sin of working too much, so much that our relationships and our families can suffer and be broken apart. Jesus died to forgive that sin and all others. And Jesus also gives us rest, Sabbath rest, as he says, and we just read it a little while ago, Matthew 28, 11, 28. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus takes the sin that exhausts us, that makes us bone tired and weary. He takes all that away with his death and resurrection. Now, because Jesus knew God created us to work, as I just showed you in Genesis 2.15. He also knew that because of our sin, we would either work with no thought to rest or rest without working at all. Work without rest leads to exhaustion and ultimately to death. Death of friendships, death of marriage, death of family. And then Jesus who died to remove that sin, also died to remove the sin that leads to the opposite choice. Not working at all. Rest without work is laziness. Or in the old way of saying it, it was called sloth. And if you remember, sloth is one of the seven deadly sins that the church identified centuries ago. Jesus died to forgive all sin, even the sin of laziness. Rest without work is laziness. And it's actually not doing what God made you to do. God created you to work. And when you don't do what God creates you to do, what God commands you to do, that's what we call sin. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus died to remove that sin that leads to all these choices. So here's the big idea. Work with an eye to the reward of rest for and by Christ. 
And the Holy Spirit can use that rest to lead others to Christ. When you take your Sabbath rest as a disciple of Jesus, people will inevitably ask you, why? Why can't you make the 8 o'clock Sunday morning tea time with us, guy? Why are you and your family going to be joining us late out at the lake? You can tell them. Jesus died to forgive our sins of not taking rest, and so we are going to respond to that by going to worship together as a family. And Jesus did that for you as well, you can tell them, and let me tell you about Jesus. See how it works. So here in the middle of summer, I think it's a good time to remember that God created us to work, but that also God created a day of rest from work. Because as creatures of God, we must take rest. It's just as vital to us as living, uh, breathing, as, as eating and drinking to live. So take a day off once a week, that Sabbath day. Use it to get closer to God in worship, just as you are doing, as, and with your family, as possible. Take that extended day off that we call the vacation, again, if possible, with your family, so that you can recharge and refresh and rest, and work on your relationship with your family, to, to strengthen that relationship. You're taking a rest to work, I understand. It sounds kind of ironic, but it's a way to strengthen that relationship. But if the resources are available to you and the people are available, plan a sabbatical, three months, six months, or even a year, to use it as an extended time to take a deep dive into how God can transform your vocation, what he has called you to do. Now, how important is this? Bronnie Ware worked as a carer for those who were dying. We might call it hospice. She did this in Australia for many years. And she made it her habit to get to know the people she was caring for and would inevitably ask them, what is your greatest regret? As they were at the end of their lives. What was your greatest regret? And she asked this of hundreds of patients through the years. And so she compiled them into a book called The Top Five Regrets of the Dying. It's, it's an insightful read, but also can be a heartbreaking read. There was one regret that was stated by every single male person that she nursed, and it was the second overall regret of all the people she nursed. Any idea what it might be? <laughs> I wish I hadn't worked so hard. I regret giving so much of myself to the treadmill of work. In other words, looking back, they wish they had given some of the time that they gave to work, to their relationships, and to rest. Think about that. According to this, then, the greatest regret at the end of our lives will be that we didn't slow down. And yet, what does God model for us at the end of the first week of all life? Rest. What an incredible reward of grace. God invites us at the beginning of all life to rest, knowing that for so many people, because of the fall, at the end of their life, that will be their greatest regret. Now, because both work and rest can be profound public expressions of what Christ has done for us, the reward of rest meets one of those boundless needs that are all around us. And the boundless love of Jesus meets that need so that we all may live with boundless hope. Leonardo da Vinci, one of history's greatest inventors, artists, painter, sculptor, poet, philosopher. He was also an engineer, a city planner, a scientist, an anatomist, and also a military genius. Someone who worked quite a bit, knew a lot about hard work, said this. Every now and then, go away. Have a little relaxation. For when you come back to your work, your judgment will be surer, since to remain constantly at work will cause you to lose power of judgment. Go some distance away, because then the work appears smaller, and more of it can be taken in at a glance, and lack of harmony or proportion is more readily seen. He knew that God created us both for work and for rest. And so Jesus says to you and to me today, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and 
I will give you rest. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.